on offense. The 2K Sports Pregame Show. NBA regular season opener for a couple of teams. Thank you all for tuning in. So happy you're here. I just, I mean, I'm ecstatic that you're here. And I I'm, miss and you I'm, too, Ernie. And I'm really happy that Kenny and Shaq are here, I too. I miss you, too, Ernie. Thank yeah, you. me, too. Moments away, it'll be the Minnesota Timberwolves going up against the Orlando Magic. Checking out the Magic, they haven't forgotten the fact that this team swept them last year in the regular season. This is a game they had circled going in. And fellas, a new season about to begin. Clean slate. Plenty of hopes and dreams out there. Kenny, how do you spot a new legitimate contender? Uh, I usually look for the team with good balance, where one guy isn't doing everything. One guy can facilitate everything, but he doesn't. He can't do everything. So offense, defense, balance, and they got to have a big shot maker. You know, I look for unselfishness, guys playing with each other, mental toughness. No weak by the team has ever won a championship, Ernie. How about continuity, too? How about very little changeover from a team that was really good the previous year, may not have gone as far as they wanted, but returning the same bunch? That helps. Yeah. Well that said. Helps. Yeah. No, no need to add anything to that. Continuity. continuity. Yeah. Kevin Harlan knows all about that. Kevin Harlan alongside Greg Anthony, Doris Burke, and David Aldridge is our sideline reporter. And also joining us on the sidelines, the league's most valuable player in 2004, Kevin Garnett. KG, it is great to have you with us. Okay, how you been, man? It's good to see you, Waiting man. for you to sit right here next to us. That's what I've been waiting man, for. Man, thank you for having me, man. It's always a pleasure to see you. Can't wait to get inside your impressions of this game. It'll be a lot of fun. It's the Orlando Magic taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves. We are nearly ready for the tip-off, but first, let's hear from our very own David Aldridge. D.A., it's all yours. Thank you, Kevin. Now, Jimmy Butler survived a tough upbringing in Tomball, Texas. He said, that's all anybody ever wanted to talk about. But I don't want that to define me. If I'm stuck in the past, then I won't get any better. I won't change. I'll get stuck as that kid. That's not who I am. I'm a great basketball player because of my work. Guys... Thanks, David. You can tell Butler has a good head on his shoulder. He's an elite talent in this league because of the hard work he puts in. Kevin, you were always known as wanting to play and always wanting to practice. You were a gym rat. What did you do when a coach would uh, ask you maybe to take a breather? Let's sit out this game. Let's rest up. Would you welcome that? Would you just say, I'll let you know when I can't go? Or how would you handle that situation? You know what? I've always asked the coach to respect the way I, I get ready for games. Mm -hmm. I've always asked him to respect the way I approach the game. I've always go. asked the coach to respect me and my expertise and knowing my body. I'm very, very vocal. Listen, if one person needs rest and it's me, I know how to raise my hand. I know how to say I need some rest. But, you know, I'm a person who likes to push through a lot of things. I'm a person who understands rest. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, I'm a person who understands that practice makes perfect. And if I can work on something for as long as I can to make something better, because I know at the end when I need it, especially when I die, I just call it dial up. When I call, I need the answer. <laughs> a look at the Magic starting group. The big men are Gordon and Vucevic. Peyton and Fournier are the one and the two. And it's Isaac in at the three spot. Now here's Fournier and stolen by Butler. Here's Wiggins, fouled in the act of shooting. A three-point play chance coming up. That's an excellent make, plus the foul, and that's the assertiveness everyone wants to see from the young guy, Wiggins. The Timberwolves shooting their first free throw of the game right now. And they had a lot of success a season ago as a team, hitting about 80% of their free throws. 
Kevin, especially back in Minnesota, you have some uh, Hall of Fame battles with uh, a guy named Tim Duncan. Mm-hmm. Talk about what those games, what those matchups were like. Timmy, man. Timmy's very crafty, man. Our, our battles used to just, especially as young guys, man, young guys trying to establish themselves in a gritty league at the mm-hmm. time, full mm-hmm. of uh, some older dominant names at the time, Michael Jordan, Elijah Ron Malone. You know, the time where the forward position was a very, very tough position. Timmy uh, was one of them ones, man. Used angles very well. Was very long. Uh, had a lot of counters. Very strong and had an inner beast that people really didn't didn't really talk about because you didn't really necessarily hear or, or see it. But uh, man, he was Timmy's one of the best. Man, it's, it's not by coincidence. He's he's one of the ones. Kevin, we see some coaches get extremely emotional on the sideline. Mm-hmm. Others take a more even-keeled approach, more calm on the sideline. Which coaching style would you prefer to play for when you were in your prime? Did you want a coach who was animated, or did you want a coach that was just kind of settled on the sideline? You know what? I like the coach that was settled on the sideline. Uh-huh. You know, I like to think that great coaches are going to be able to coach you in practice, and then during the games, you know, it's about the product and what you put out on the floor. Yes. You know, coaches that have understanding, coaches that have vision, coaches that understand the game, you know, understand that this is a game of runs, you know that it's a game of momentum, and have plays for those momentums and those times. A, a coach that I've always gravitated to and, and understood that they Like, like Doc was kind of in between, a little, little bit of emotion, but that he could also have a calm demeanor on that side. And Doc was all fire, I'm sorry. <laughs> Doc, <laughs> there was nothing calming I'm about Doc. I'm trying to Doc. cover Doc's back here. Uh, no, shout to Doc. <laughs> Doc. Doc would rip your head off if you wasn't supposed to. But you know what? You need to play with that edge. You needed to know that if you wasn't in your spot, 1 through 15, you understood that you were supposed to be there. And... It's good to play with that. I think that um, you don't want to be out there. Oh! How about that? Turn defense into offense. A great steal. And Wiggins for the score. And that replay brought to us by Under Armour. Another Unleash Chaos moment. One of the more exciting plays in basketball. To the wing right side. Here's Isaac. And it's good off the back rim and in. Isaac's got five now. Kevin, when you're talking about influences, you mentioned Chris Webber's name a lot. Yeah, see, Webb uh, was kind of, uh, he and Stacey Augman was at a time where I was trying to find myself as a player. Search for a roadmap, maybe, you know, who do I most resemble? Not only that, but just some direction, you know. At the yeah. time, I was a big who had handles, and, and if you know anything about <laughs> Southern coaches, they don't want their big hell in the ball. Yeah. So you get the ball up to a guard or whatever. It wasn't until I got to Chicago to where the scouts or, you know, people were able to see, like, wow, this big can actually handle the ball. He has handle a little bit. And then my high school coach would actually make me bring the ball up to show off or showcase. No I, kidding. I hated it. No, I was like, yeah, oh, but, my but, God. But look I at what happened. bring the right? ball up. <laughs> <laughs> and he knew that turning, I could handle it. I was like, oh, my God, I hated this. And, oh! oh yeah. Unbelievable. He elevates Wiggins with a highlight move that time. The Magic trail by six. Kevin, one of the biggest moments of your career, the 2008 championship with the Boston Celtics. Talk about the camaraderie among that group of players. You know, Kev, I can tell right away uh, that we have something special getting to get oh, that jam. Wow, get out of the way. Wow, the size and speed of Towns, a natural-born highlight reel. And, Kevin, your last couple years, you got to mentor some young players. Carl Anthony Towns comes to mind. How good do you think he can be? Man, Cat is the next. He is what I call good. the next of the next. Yes, he has the pedigree. He has the, he has the work ethic. He has the IQ. Most importantly, the desire. You know, when you talk about uh, players being better, I always like to think about if players know history. He understands history. He's been here before. Um, if you follow him uh, through his high school years, he's always wanted to be an anchor. He's always wanted to be a very informative person. Mm-hmm. He, but he looks for knowledge. He seeks a lot of knowledge. He wants to know what he's up against as far as history. Who am I chasing? What's his number? How many rebounds did he get? What did he do his rookie year? That's what's driving him. Fournier against Butler. No one near Peyton as he lets it go. And again, it's the magic from deep. Kevin, when you entered the draft, no player had made the jump from high school to the NBA in 20 years. And What were your emotions when your name was called number five overall? 
Oh man, I remember that. It was so 17 years old. 17, just turning 18 at the time. I was in like a whirlwind, to be honest. Um, a lot of people don't know. It's a lot of stuff that goes up into the draft. You know, things that I wasn't aware of. You're training twice a day. You know, you're trying to get ready for uh, the combine. You're trying to get ready for uh, pre-draft. You got to do workouts. This is all new to me. On top of still going to high school, trying to, you know, graduate and stuff. So I figured it out. I hustled and I bustled and I, I, I juggled a bunch of different things. But once your name is called, it's almost like the culmination. It all comes together. It's a special moment for just you and your family and your loved ones and ones around you. And um, when my name was called, it felt like the world had stopped and everything was going very slow. Shoots the three. Oh, he got hacked on the three-pointer. He'll head to the line. Yeah, he, there was definitely some contact there on the three-point attempt. The Magic shooting their first free throws here tonight. And Kevin, you played for some great coaches, but is there any coach you would have been interested to work with uh, that just didn't get a chance to? Say, you know, Greg Popovich or mm. Phil Jackson. Mm. You know, those are great coaches. I've had very, very little uh, time with those guys. Maybe in all-star games and things like I that. I have, yeah. I have. But, yeah. you know, when you do all-star games, you're very, you let yourself go. You know, you open up yourself to try to, you know, be there and be present with the guys. Yes. Open up, you know, hey, what's up? We're up with you. How, how's the year for y'all? Y'all playing well. We're going to beat y'all when we see y'all, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, you're very cordial. And, you know, you're not talking too much about X's and O's. But you do share perspectives. You do share, you know, philosophies. Pop is a great mind. I had a chance to sit with him a couple times. Phil's a great mind. Phil is super deep and loves the philosophy of. Um, I haven't had a, a lot of time with those guys. Uh, Doc Rivers, you know, shout to Doc. And, you know, I, I know he doesn't get a lot for his philosophies, but he's very enriched with philosophies and styles and bringing uh, teams together and trying to make sure that guys stay uh, uh, connected, connected yeah. stimulated. He, he would always tell us that never get bored with the process. Wow, that's so intriguing. Interesting to hear. And KG, talk about how the greats can just impose their will. It's almost like another level. Yeah. When you see LeBron, what he did to Detroit in their fourth quarter, that's a blackout. You don't know what you're doing. When, you're, when you see Cole go for 81, when you see Chauncey come down on a one, th these players are blacking out. These are elite players in elite moments, taking the moment. Paul Pierce is one of the best that I've ever seen grab a moment and savor it and just put it in slow-mo. Nothing speeding them up. Special players. Special players. But I get, I get a front row seat of seeing them. Ray Allen, the same thing. He had a great composure about himself to slow himself down and hit pressure shots. Tim Duncan, same thing. And Towns gets it to go. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. Hazonia kicks to Gordon. Over Jang. They get it back, Yambo, and that one clearly a foul, gets the whistle, and two shots coming up. A chance here to assess what parts of the four the attempts have been coming from as we look at the shot chart for the Timberwolves. And the corner three has not been their shot of choice here tonight. And I think a big reason for that has been the defensive setup. They, they came in focused on taking away the short-range triple. Simmons checked in for Orlando. And Kevin, there was such a whirlwind around your trade to the Celtics from the Timberwolves. What were your thoughts and emotions at that time? You know what? Being in Minnesota at the time, it was very difficult for me. I didn't necessarily want to leave. I had a goal to bring the city a championship, and I felt like I could do that. Nothing worse than when you have to deal with the reality of change. Yes. I'm not the one for change, even though I do know in order to process or progress better, you have to embrace some change. So with the help of my friends from uh, Chauncey Billups, uh, Teron Lou, I sat and I thought through it with those guys who have been through the trade process and talking to me, and getting me to understand my options. And once I understood all my options, then I just, you know, it was about what was best for me and, with me and my fam. Mm, wow, yeah, there, there's a lot to consider. And how's that for a solo performance? Well, you couldn't do it any better than that, Greg. Textbook execution on the break. Pass to Hazania. Doubled by Crawford. Hazonia kicks to Simmons. And stolen by Jang. And now the Timberwolves on the break. 
And finished off by Zhang. Well, you get a sense of the long strides of Zhang. Quite helpful in transition. The Magic trail by 10. And Kev, you had a voice in where you'd go from Minnesota. How did all that play out? I sat with uh, you know, my wife and we all you know, kind of went through it and, and thought Boston was the best situation. Paul and I had great bones and uh, great history that uh, I don't think the world really knew. Uh, we have been knowing each other since 14, 15. I played with each other younger and I had a chance to play with Cole, but uh, that really didn't go through. A lot of people don't know I had a chance to play with Steve Nash also, but I wanted to play with Stoudemire and that wasn't the case. So I decided to go uh, to Boston. Ray and I knew each other from South Carolina. And then, um, you know, the Rondo piece was a huge piece for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I had followed the young stuff in uh, his first year and just watched his growth a little bit, even though I was in the Western Conference. And then when I got to Boston, I knew they had good pieces like Kendrick Perkins and Tony Allen. I wasn't aware of the big baby piece yet. And then um, I wasn't sure on the, uh, the posy part. And then all of a sudden, it started to come together, Eddie House. And then all of this and um great names. I mean great just great names. Just all alphas. Yeah, all guys yeah. to stand up and speak for themselves and be articulate and you know, all different facets and you know very similar facets of who we are personality wise. And a lot of people just don't know that that team there, I don't think a, another coach could have coached that team other than Doc Rivers. And so it's Minnesota going into the break with a 10-point lead. They're pounding the ball inside, and that's where they've gotten their best production tonight. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. And a guy who seems to improve every season, Jimmy Butler. He spoke with us about one of his biggest surprises. It's crazy because I've never thought that anybody would be preparing to guard me night in and night out. But they do. I have to um, learn to cope with that and still find a way to be um, successful on both ends of the floor. And it's a learning curve for me also, but I'm, I'm figuring it out. And hard to doubt the dedication of Jimmy Butler. He's found a way to overcome obstacles at each important point along the way. You know, he's a self-made player. And if Butler can stay healthy, boy, the sky's the limit. Welcome back, folks. We'll see if we're in store for a more tightly contested quarter as we move here into the second. And what do you guys think about Minnesota here in this one? They're just not sitting back. They are going for steals, and their activity has been terrific. It has, Greg, no doubt. Love that they've gotten after it on the defensive end. Just continue to put pressure on. Down low, it's Jang and Towns. Crawford out there with Jones, and it's Muhammad in at the three. That's the five to begin the second quarter for the Timberwolves. From outside the arc, count that one, and the Minnesota lead has been cut to just nine on the basket from Azania. Kevin, um, of all the people you've faced, who is the toughest guy for you to score against down low? Let's we'll pick that geography. <laughs> who is the toughest to score against down there? Listen, I know a lot of people. I've always said Rasheed Wallace. I've always said uh, Tim Duncan. They're probably the two that brought a different level of play out of me, but... Shout out to Cliff Robinson, man. Cliff Robinson. I don't know if people know Cliff this, but Robinson. Cliff Robinson, man. Cliff Robinson was one of the better defenders in the post. He was very strong. He was very long. He didn't go for any counters. He was very disciplined. He was well prepared because he was a veteran. The refs let him get away with a lot, touching and grabbing. He knew when to be physical in some positions. He knew to do what we call work early. Uh, he would meet you at the three-point line, and he would be fighting you, and you would post up probably like a step outside the three-point line. Like he was really good at some of his techniques and how he was able to control the post. After Cliff left the game, I watched a lot of his tape, and I took a lot of his... Uh, no kidding. I, I had to because it was so effective against me that I was able to use it against other post players on the defensive end. I like, never knew that story. Dennis Rodman was another guy I watched a lot. Akeem Olajuwon I watched a lot because these guys were laterally very similar to my makeup. Akeem Olajuwon was long. He was able to laterally move with you. I was laterally able to move with guards. I was able to laterally to slide with some of the uh, forwards and some of the uh, more laterally uh, gifted uh, power forwards. And with that, able to get my feet together, being able to block shots, challenge the rim, stuff like that. Things that if you're going to get better at something, you got to go and reach and find the great ones that did it before you and taken it in. I was able to apply it, and I did those things. He gets a chance now to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Hall of Famer David Aldridge. 
Well, guys, analytics has taken over the NBA, but Minnesota coach and president of basketball operations, Tom Thibodeau, says it doesn't tell you everything. He said analytics can measure a lot of things, but it's very difficult to measure drive. The magic is in the work. Kevin? And Tom Thibodeau makes a good point, DA. Analytics is certainly helpful, but it doesn't capture everything. Big group substitution now for Minnesota. Taj Gibson's checked in for Carl Anthony Towns. Andrew Wiggins comes in for Shabazz Muhammad. Jimmy Butler, he's checked in for Jamal Crawford. And it's Teagan for Tyus Jones. Vucevic, he's checked in for Orlando. Fournier comes in for Hazania. And let's quickly take a look at some stats for Teague. Good season for him last year. Averaged 15 points a game, seven assists and four rebounds. And when he takes over at the point, he really keeps the offense flowing. Well, this is a guy who brings a solid skill set. Excellent ball handler, high level of playmaking, the perfect backup point. And again, it's Minnesota. Kevin, you were a mainstay All-Star Week. Uh, you've seen everything there. If it were up to you, would you make any changes in All-Star Week in the events and the way everything is kind of carried out? You've went to so many. I have. And you know what? Each city gives you a true essence of its own identity. I would like to see each city get a chance to host, regardless of if it's big enough or not. I yes. think that each city has... Now, the ability to host, I think each city... Uh, if you're with the family, then you should be able to host in the family, right? Well, not only that, but just think about what All-Star is, man. It's an event. It's a family and event. And each city wants to be able to show you their best thing about their city. Yeah, easy call. The Magic have put up good numbers at the charity strike, converting 6 of 7. And they were 75% from the line a season ago. Isaac's checked in for Biombo. And people may not know, KG, that you're not just a broadcaster for 2K, but you're a member of the 2K community. Have you been keeping up with the community, man? Oh, yeah, very man, much so. Man, listen, very um, much so. shout out to all the 2K players out there. Um, I'm Jizzle Lord. Y'all know what it is. I'm Jizzle Lord 5. Shout to my OBF team. Y'all know what it is. Shout to Dex. Shout to Bug. Shout to everybody out there playing. Wow. Right, we we def wow. It's all good, you know. I'm I'm OBF. I'm about the team. I'm gang gang. You know what it is. <laughs> Just a Lord, y'all holler at me. Y'all know what it is. 2K. Right, right. Kevin, when you played, we all know how intense you were, how much you cared. That to me was the thing that really, you cared so much about the product, about your team, about the game. But some people have said uh, that maybe there was a streak of you that was mean is maybe not the right word, but you were overly aggressive. Right? But but I don't know how you could have played any differently than that. I call it dialed in. What? You know, I like to think that if you're trying to accomplish something, then, you know, I only know one way to go accomplish at it with something. Gusto, you, go, right? you go at it with everything you have. Yes. You go to dominate it and take it over. You don't go at something uh, lightly. You can't not, walk not, through the park no, with this not, game, not, game. Not at all. Not at all. And uh, this game is full of talented elites. Night in, night out, you're playing someone that can typically go for 50 easy. So true. Peyton, he's checked in for the Magic. Here's Isaac. A rebound by the Timberwolves. An interconference matchup. They faced these guys twice a season, and last year they took both games. Kevin, with intentional fouling, with poor free throw shooters being sent to the line currently, the hack of Drummond, hack, you know, hack of Shaq, I mean, right. all this stuff, hack of DeAndre right. Jordan. Yeah. What are your thoughts on all that? You know what? I like it. You know what it's going to do? It's part gonna, of the strategy. It's, it's going to put the strategy, and this is part of it. And you know what you got to do? It's going to make all those guys you just named work on their free throw. Mm -hmm. Because if any advantage that you have in the game, coaches are going to expose it. Coaches are going to expose all weak points, as they should as any sport and as any great is going to expose any weaknesses in defenses, he's going to look to expose those things. So this is one of the things that dictates the game and these guys are going to have to be better. It's going to push them. It's going to make them better players. Kevin, over the years, we've seen a number of super teams develop and in mm. the Warriors' case, it's not the big three, it's the big four. Mm. Is this a trend you see continuing? You did it in Boston. Man, look, I... You were it, the original it's, it's, big three. It seems like it, eh? You yeah, know, right. You it's, were the, the original like, big three. You know what? It's like an innovative type of thing, right? Was, I didn't even know that we were well, doing no that. Doubt. Right, because LeBron no come back and do what? LeBron goes to uh, Miami. He's Miami the big three that, right? right down there. Yeah. And then what? Then it just starts morphing and into then, these different things, right? KD to Golden State. Right. Yeah. Oh, man. This is, what do you think of that? I think this is pretty much the norm. You know what? Listen, I think KD took a lot of heat for it, but when you really think about what he's doing, is that I say 20 years from now, 
And he sits back and he wants to talk to Steph, he wants to talk to Draymond, he's talking to Clay. These are all going to be three greats Andre, with him. Andre, this yeah. is, I'm just talking about those three yes, guys there. Yes. He's playing with three other greats. I'm sorry. If you had a chance to play with the other greats in the prime, Kev, you're going to do that. And if you don't, then something's wrong with you. And how about a look at Jimmy Butler? Coming off a terrific season, fifth in steals, 14th in scoring, and he'd make you pay every time he went to the line. Top 20 in free throw percentage. And as you pointed out, he was top five in steals last season. Just a lethal combination of great physical ability and an acute mental preparation. And they double up eight. And the foul on Andrew Wiggins. That is his first foul of the game. And now only one away from being in the penalty. 13 feet away. Count that one. And the Timberwolves lead has been cut down now to just 11 on the bucket from Vucevic. Kevin, you were so successful jumping from high school to pros. What do you think about the current situation now, the, the age of 19, the minimum, to go to the draft? You know, I'm always be a fan of, of the younger kids being able to have the opportunity. I don't like when you put parameters. I could see if college was really teaching these kids and really giving them a, a solid situation to be able to uh, have something to defer to. But, you know, these kids are not learning at the rate that you would like them to learn in college. And plus, they're not staying in college to these great institutions to be able to apply some of the things they're learning. So I just think that they need their basketball players. The basketball players, but they should have the opportunity to take advantage of if you're able to play at 17, 18 like I was. Not saying that every kid's going to have that, but you have obviously the D League. You have all these multiple leagues throughout the world and where kids go to play. You know, some kids have missed out just because of that one year and some mishaps. And you sit here, you can say, you know, for business is good for this. Listen, the business is what it's going to be. We need to develop and have these kids be professionals more than anything. We need to grow these kids from a skill level and an appetite level. Our game was built off the want to be better than the ones that's come before us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lou Alcindor came in here. He was, uh, a.k.a., obviously, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He was more encouraged to beat out Wilt Chamberlain and Bill Russell more than anything. And then that starts to trickle down from the effect of from Jordan wanting to be better than Larry Bird and Magic to Cole wanting to be better. And, you know, it's the same thing. It's being trickled down. And um, when I think of greatness, I think, you know, it's going to follow. It's going to be shadows. And it's, at some point, it's going to mimic. Carl Anthony Towns checked in for Minnesota. Crawford comes in for Wiggins. Hezania, he's checked in for Orlando. Crawford's shot is good. And the jump shot has been a dimension of this game where they've had a clear advantage. Here's Hezania. That's good. And it's Peyton with the assist. Hezania's got nine. You know, building up confidence as the game goes on. Hit one from behind the arc in the opening period. Two here in the second. A nice shot by Teague. As hot as he's been this quarter, the game plan is simple, folks. Get him the ball and get out of the way. They double him with Butler. It's stolen by Teague. They're running. Ahead. And again, Jamal Crawford. He's got six. Boy, that's terrific vision on the part of Butler. Knows the offense is not created in a vacuum. Keeps the teammates involved. Always puts a smile on their face. Doubled by Crawford. Crawford with the steal. Here's Butler. And he's fouled on the shot. One free throw coming up. And now he's taken a solid opening in the quarter and built on it here in the second. And he's got his first chance at the line here. Jones checked in for Minnesota. Biombo is checked in for the Magic. Aaron Gordon comes in for Isaac. Free throw, good Butler. Well, listen, Kev, we know this. Getting to the line has become such a big part of Jimmy Butler's game. I can't help but admire how he has put together a complete package of an NBA game. It's really a thing of beauty. Adding a lot of flavor to the mix, Kevin Garnett. Kevin, thanks for stepping by. Always a pleasure. Hope you join us again sometime. Man, Kevin, it's always a pleasure, man. It's always great to see you, man. Anytime you need me, you holler at me, all right? Future Hall of Famer and a terrific person, Kevin Garnett. And Doris, one of the things that really strikes me about KG, he's as smart as he is, athletically gifted. What a treat to have him join us tonight. Well, I'm in awe of his enthusiasm. And it's not just when he's talking, but when others are talking as well. There's so much life to the conversation. Everything he brought to the court for 21 years, he now brings to the booth. Muhammad, he's checked in for Jimmy Butler. Here's Jones. 
and again it's Minnesota. Now really found his stroke here in the second quarter after missing everything in the first. The feet to Fournier. Kicks it to Gordon. And Jones over to help. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Gordon. The Magic making a switch here. Simmons is checked in. Here's Crawford. Five seconds separating the shot and game clocks. Muhammad. And again, Minnesota with the triple. And good passing. Setting up a lot of these buckets right now, Kevin. That's been the key. Peyton against Muhammad. The pass to Gordon. Yambo dishes to Peyton. Orlando moving the ball around. The Magic have gone 9 of 10 from the line, so making the most of their chances. That's good from Hazania. He doesn't get the second one. Here's Towns. Shoots over Biambo. Misses the jumper. You're not going to see that very often. Plenty of space, but he just, let's face it, he whiffs on that one. And through the first half, a pretty lopsided affair. But Timberwolves on top, running away with it. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Kevin, thanks. Here with Jeff Teague. Jeff, they grabbed the lead on you guys. How were you able to grab it back? Came back in and just started playing harder. Uh, we know these are some crucial games for us right now at home. And we just got to go out there and try to get wins. Well, we'll see who grabs it last. Jeff, thanks a lot. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David. We'll be back after halftime for the start of the second half momentarily. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. And welcome to halftime. Hey, hey, what a fantastic time of the year. NBA season getting underway. Hey, you know, hey. I'm excited. I am really excited. I am really, really excited, honey. Andrew Wiggins led the way in the first half. He ended up with 19 points, three steals, and one assist. And uh, Kenny, what did you see out there from the Timberwolves? When Andrew Wiggins is aggressive, he can produce at an all-star level. Unselfish to a fault at times, he was focused on getting his own in the first half. And he's much stronger physically now. He can be a beast at the rim. His career has just taken off. And Shaq, let's get your input on the Magic. Well, they struggle in a number of areas. Protecting the rim is really at the top of the list. They haven't made that a priority. They haven't put forth a whole lot of effort. You got to protect the rim. And that wraps up the halftime show. Third quarter set to begin in just a few. Well, it's been a one-sided affair so far through the first two quarters, but there's plenty of time to mount a comeback. You look at Andrew Wiggins in this game, he's been everywhere. Oh, well, they've done a good job of letting the game come to them and really few four shots here so far. I think, Greg, we're seeing a couple things. Terrific play calling, unselfish nature, and quality shooting. That makes for good offense. Welcome back, everybody. Third quarter just about to get going here in what has been so far a runaway game. Of course, we talk about speed and quickness being a difference maker on offense, which players really use those attributes to lock down players defensively. Well, I think it's hard not to look at Marcus Smart and Jay Crowder, the kind of physical attributes, meaning speed, toughness, length, but they also have the mindset necessary to look opposite some of the best players in the league and say, not on my watch. I'm going to get down in my stance and I'm going to prohibit you from getting to your strengths. It's really maybe underappreciated by everyone except coaches and fans of the game. True, and you and I were just talking about Tony Allen. That's a great point. I mean, Tony Allen has made his career specifically on the defensive end because, as you know, he's an opportunistic cutter, and if you leave him open, he can make an uncontested mid-range. But the reality is Tony Allen is in the NBA because he is a great defensive player. Well, we've got a moment. Let's set the floor. Brought to you by Gatorade. All fueled up for the second half. And so in the game for the Magic, Peyton and Fournier are the one and the two. The big men are Gordon and Vucevic. And it's Isaac in at the three spot.
And that one goes in. Two from the line that time. And doors as many NBA teams are doing. The Minnesota Timberwolves now have their own G League affiliate. Well, and to me, this is a smart move by the organization, Kev, because it gives them a lot of flexibility in how they develop players. It's a very useful tool given their young talent. Only positives have come from teams purchasing G League affiliates. Ripping and running. They have a big advantage now in those transition opportunities. And the call will be against Jeff T. That'll be his second foul of the game. On defense, the Timberwolves. Shoots the three. Offensive rebound. Gordon, the pass to Vucevic. He hits the back iron and sinks the shot. Vucevic has got four points this quarter. Well, there is clearly a size mismatch. And from the mid-range, there's no way that shot's going to be blocked. Well, he's one of those guys who's kept their offense clicking. They're in front, thanks in no small part to what this guy's done. Pass to Isaac. He dishes it to Fournier. Shoots the three. Sinks the three-pointer. And that's 13 points for Alfred Payton. If they think they can give him that shot and get away with it, think again, gentlemen. And Towns gets it to go. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Peyton drives in, and they double up Peyton. Inside, here's Vucevic. That's good, and it's Peyton with the assist. Vucevic has got 18 points in the game. They're doing work here in the second half, three or four to start. They grab their own miss, and again, Carl Anthony Towns. Well, such work ethic. Towns brutal on the offensive glass. Time called here. The Magic decide to talk it over. Well, Towns does so many things on the floor. Already an elite post score. But, Greg, one area that he has struggled with at times is his defense against other bigs. And I think he'll continue to improve in that area. What happens with young guys, though, is oftentimes you're improved how good I am mode when you're young and you lose sight of some of the things that help you win games. And I think that's one reason why he had one of the worst defensive RPMs in the entire league. But young bigs tend to take a bit longer to develop into great defenders, and I expect he will follow in that line. Now a chance to take a look at the shot chart for the Timberwolves. And everything he's touched has turned to gold. If you are on defense, you have to make sure all five players know exactly where he is at all times. Because if he gets a sliver of a look, he'll get it done. Two minutes gone in this third quarter now. And there's the goal on Carl Anthony Towns. That's foul number two for him. it loose. Payton kicks to Vucevic. Back to Payton. Some nice ball movement by the Magic. Gordon with the screen for Fournier. Shot clock at six. Picked by Vucevic. Off the screen. That one is good. He's only missed one shot of his six taken on the floor. Just a positive force right now for these guys. And though his team has fallen a bit short, it's not because of him. They're doing a really good job of getting the ball inside and attacking the paint. That's an area they have completely dominated. And we've got an update here, so let's catch up with David Aldridge. Well, Kevin, Carl Anthony Towns was voted by GMs last season as the player they most want to build a franchise around. But he is not resting on his laurels. He said, I work hard on my game. I want to be the strongest player, the most intelligent player, and the most skilled player on the court at all times. Kevin? Thanks, David. That work ethic will definitely help Towns get better. He's already a dynamite player. Jang, he's checked in for Minnesota. And the Magic making a change here as well. Ross is checked in. Basket good. When the mid-range is working for Terrence Ross, he's going to create problems. It's just a matter of can he do it consistently, Kev? And that one's good. Wigan. And a lot of teams avoid the mid-range jumper, but they seem to be using it well. They double him with Butler. For three, Ross. Rebound, Minnesota. And they've only got a slight edge on the boards, but it just feels a lot bigger. I'm sorry, that's poor defense down low again. It's been a mismatch thus far in the paint. 
Just over three and a half minutes through the third quarter of play now. No one covering. Fournier's got 11. And really, as the three-pointers keep dropping, you get the sense that the frustration is mounting for the defense. Orlando, they've gone 7 of 9 from the field to start this second half. Some tremendous shooting from them. And again, it's the magic from deep. Yeah, and that's back-to-back -back threes. The D just seems to be slacking off a little bit. Well, that's an unwillingness to settle. Gorgie Zhang fights for a better look. Nice. The Magic trail by 21. Feeds it to Ross. No good on the three. Minnesota's gone along perfectly from three-point range. Tonight, they've gone five for five. And it's Butler missing. And that's the shot you want to create. They just can't get it to fall. Well, certainly a disappointing result, but they'll live with the shot. Uh, you know, they'll take that every time. Teague dishes to Butler and slam dunk by Butler. Well, a point guard must understand window of opportunity, and Jeff Teague specializes in exactly that. They double him with Butler. Out of, Out of bounds. Minnesota takes possession. Looking now at the numbers for Andrew Wiggins. He had a strong showing last season. He was around 23 points a game last year. Four time rebounds out, and two assists. And right now for him, it's Sorry. about gaining experience and continuing to develop his game. This is a man's game, and you've got to earn your minutes in this league. This guy, his time will come eventually. So the Timberwolves call their first timeout. I think it's been a long rebuild for the Magic, but they really feel they've got a plan in place. Well, you heard the front office talking that they're going to win at least one championship by the year 2030. And I got to say, that's an interesting quote, to, to say the least. I mean, I have heard of a five-year plan, but a 13-year plan? I guess you'd call that building for the long term. Minnesota making some changes. Shabazz Muhammad's checked in for Gorgie Dan. Crawford comes in for Jimmy Butler, and Jones subbed in for Jeff T. Orlando also making some changes. Biombo checks in for Aaron Gordon, and Mario Hazonia subbed in for Fournier. Vucevic with it, now guarded by Towns. They blow the whistle just as he gets it off. That's two points with a chance for another one at the stripe. Norris, uh, as we know, you were born in New York, grew up in New Jersey, lots of basketball talent in those areas. Who were some local players who influenced you early on? Well, 1983 is the year the Philadelphia 76ers won the NBA championship, and that team was the epitome of cool, Kevin, right? You mm -hmm. had the masterful doctor, the power of Moses Malone, but you know who I tried to emulate? Mo Cheeks. The no steady, kidding. Yeah, the steady, heady point guard who could make big shots and come up with a timely steal. I couldn't be the doctor. I couldn't fly like the doc, so I, Mo Cheeks was my guy. <laughs> Fires from 18, and a kind roll that time off the rim as that one falls. Towns has got 12 now in this quarter. Peyton kicks to Vucevic. Inside, it's deflected. Muhammad with the steal. Goes up, and the dunk by Muhammad. Sneaky in transition. Muhammad always looking for opportunities to score. Guys, nothing has really come easy for him today. Yeah, definitely not their best basketball. Vucevic with it. Now defended by Muhammad. Vucevic against Jones. Vucevic with the bucket. Boy, he's carried his share of the load tonight, Kev. But he might need to carry even more if they're going to turn this thing around. It's stolen by Vucevic. Up top, Ross. Covered by Wiggins. There's the dish to Vucevic. And oh boy, a lot of contact there. But he gets the call and will shoot two. Jamal Crawford picks one up. 
And Greg, you wouldn't expect it from a Coach Thibodeau team, but defense was an issue for the Timberwolves last year. And the Wolves brought in Butler to help with offense, but more importantly, his defense. And, and Butler, familiar with what Thibs likes to do on both ends of the floor, has the leadership the team needs, particularly on the defensive end. The Magic making a switch here. Simmons is checked in. He kicks it to Vucevic. Back to Simmons. There's the screen. Biombo with it. Now defended by Muhammad. Ross for three. And he's good on the three ball. Ross has got eight. Yeah, Ke Terrence Ross in his comfort zone from distance. This guy has always had the eye of a sharpshooter. Count that one. And he has just been in a flow offensively. Terrific game. He has been the X Factor. And Simmons kicks to Vucevic. Muhammad with the steal. And here we go. Fast break. Muhammad's got it. And again, it's Minnesota. You know, guys, fast break points right now in their favor. And, and they're really pushing the tempo. And that replay brought to us by Under Armour. Another Unleash Chaos moment. One of the more exciting plays in basketball. Well, Orlando shooting nearly 70% from the floor. They are putting on a clinic offensively. And count it. The shot is good. He'll go to the free throw line. And not being as aggressive from the three-point line anymore. They had a lot more attempts in that first half. Minnesota making a switch here. Gibson's checked in. And even though they're down, they are putting on a show at the free throw line. Well, Taj Gibson, a terrific athlete, easily gets off the floor to finish with authority. The Magic trail by 21. Dishes it to Ross. And the rejection by Town. Vucevic with the bucket. Dominating this quarter. He's been absolutely fantastic shooting the ball, and they still trail. Passes it to Towns. Rebound by the Magic. Boy, the defense collapsing and throwing him off balance on his way to the cup. Ross kicks to Simmons. And again, it's the Magic from deep. Another triple, and that's been the story of this second half. Boy, they have consistently been draining shots from deep, and that can take the heart out of an opponent. Boy, this guy has been transcendent this quarter. Something really lit a fire underneath this guy. Let's it go from 11, and it falls over the rim and in. 29 points for Vucevic. He has certainly done his part this period. Uh, just needs to get a little more help from his teammates. Now flying high and throwing it down with the one hand. One of his favorite moves right there, guys. To the middle. And there's Bismack Biombo on the assist by Vucevic. Vucevic has got three assists tonight. Jones, that's for two. No good that time. And as we end the third quarter, a double-digit deficit will make it tough to come back. Timberwolves lead by 16. And fourth quarter basketball will be coming your way on 2K Sports right after this. Now let's hear what Coach Tom Thibodeau was reviewing with his team in the huddle. Defensively, make sure we're all getting rebounded. No second shot. In transition, everyone talking. No open threes in transition. And Tom Thibodeau wanting his team to pay particular attention to certain areas of their defense. Yeah, taking care of the defensive boards, allowing no easy baskets on the fast break. These are key elements in terms of you having success. And we're rolling here again with the fourth quarter. Might not come down to the wire, but you never know. Gibson is the four with Towns in the middle. Jones is out there with Crawford. And it's Butler in at the small four. So that's the lineup for Minnesota. And Gibson always has had a solid mid-range game. You can't let him get comfortable from that spot. Pass to Ross. He feeds it to Biombo. And then Biombo with the dunk. And if that doesn't get them fired up, guys, nothing will. Greg, just what the doctor ordered, huh? Some high-flying annex to narrow the deficit. Yeah, and an example of why you want to let the game come to you. The opening presented itself, he converted in a big way. 
Cross in the corner. There's the three. The basket good off the assist from Simmons. Simmons got his fourth assist in this one. You have to know when to simply catch and shoot, and it serves Terrence Ross very well that time. And he can't get the first one. So for the Magic, Aaron Gordon, he's checking in for Terrence Ross, and Evan Fournier subbed in for Hazania. Doris, so much offense is perimeter generated right now. What, if anything, could get us back to running more plays, say, through the post? Do you think we could reinvent Hakeem Olajuwon or perhaps Patrick <laughs> Ewing or I Bill wish we Russell? could. I wish we could. <laughs> because I know this. Good point. <laughs> Every time I walk by a pickup game on the outside, you see guys sprinting to the three-point line and looking to be Steph Curry. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Teague, he's checked in for the Timberwolves. First minute and a half of basketball played here in the fourth quarter. Doubled by Crawford, the feed to Fournier. Now, here's Biombo. Not a lot of room. Gordon a screen. Shot clock at six. Fournier against Butler. The shot's good from Fournier. Man, it, this has been fun. I mean, we got two teams dueling down the stretch. Boy, does it feel to you, Greg, like every single shot is going through the bucket? That's how lethal both of these teams have been late in this one. You know, I love how he absorbs the foul and still had a chance to knock that one down. Well, Taj Gibson is a pro's pro. The rugged power forward is known for his consistency. You can count on this guy game in and game out. Alfred Payton, he's checked in for Jonathan Simmons. And the rejection by Towns. Payton. Pass to Isaac. Let's it go from deep. And again, it's Orlando with the three. Oh, great ball movement there. Crawford passes to Gibson over Gordon. And it's Gibson that time on the assist by Crawford. Crawford's got three assists now in this one. The Magic trail by nine. Payton kicks to Fournier. To the inside. And the rejection by Towns. Well, his value to this team on both ends. Not many guys can defend the perimeter and the rim the way Towns can. And a good example there of why it's important to change ends quickly. Well, that's how you attack in transition. Remarkable effort. Getting as high percentage a look as you can really get. Butler attacking. That shot is good. He has made eight while missing only four. That's 67% shooting. Signature move by Butler right there. Strong drive, followed time by out, the finish out. through contact. That's him in a nutshell. Now a timeout called by Orlando. Boy, how bright is the future for Carl Anthony Towns? The guy's already putting up 25 and 12 in his second year. This guy led every big man in double-doubles last year. He dominates every category you want a big man to impact. And talking about Towns, Doris, and his double-doubles last season ended up being third overall amongst all players, trailing only Westbrook and Harden. Not, not bad company at all. Well, yeah, there's no question. It's amazing to me, Kev, how easy Carl Anthony Towns makes it look. He puts huge numbers up on a nightly basis, and to be honest, he's going to be regarded very soon as the best big man in the league. Higgins is checked in for Jamal Crawford. Now let's go to the sideline and catch up with our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge. Well, guys, during that last timeout and listen to Frank Vogel talk to his team, he is not happy with the turnovers. He said, we have got to get some shots. It's as simple as that, guys. Play smart and value the basketball. We'll see if the message sunk in, Kevin. Towns, and the shot is good, dropping in off the front of the rim. Towns has got 36. On the catch and shoot, just so relaxed. Almost looks like Towns is playing a game of horse out there. Count that one, and the Timberwolf lead has been cut to just nine points on the basket from Isaac. Ring shot on the way. Butler missing again. The Magic have gone seven of 11 from the floor in the final quarter so far. Been some solid looks for them. And Gibson sends it back. Boy, Gibson's good. so good at timing these rejections. Twice on the pipes Hit. from Taj. 
and Aaron Gordon, the athletic Aaron Gordon, playing much of last season at the small forward position during Serge Ibaka's short. Oh, oh look out! Wow. Strong Ooh. finish. Wow. Ooh, get, getting frisky. Yes. It's not every day <laughs> we see a dunk like that. I hope everybody was harnessed in for that one. Oh, the athleticism, the creativity, beautiful things to watch. Timberwolves leading by six. Here's Gibson, rebounded by Isaac. Isaac's got six rebounds here tonight. And there's the foul, it goes on Taj Gibson. That's his first foul. Vucevic checked in for Bismack Biombo. And they double up Peyton. To the paint, and the basket by Isaac. And now it's just a four-point Timberwolves lead. Dominating this quarter. He's been absolutely fantastic shooting the ball, and they still trail. Towns and a good offensive board, and he gets the bucket. Towns has got 38 points. I think this is just one of those nights scoring the basketball. Towns is just showing off. Towns comes with a double team, and Fournier kicks to Vucevic. And the shot goes down. Vucevic has got 31. He's shooting the lights out down the stretch, trying to keep them competitive. And there's the foul. It goes on Taj Gibson. That's foul number two for him. Oh, really smooth. Andrew Wiggins with the terrific mid-range game. And they double up Peyton. Gibson against Gordon. And again, it's Orlando converting. Timberwolves leading by four. Teague dishes to Wiggins. And that comes off the assist by Jeff Teague. 32 points for Andrew Wiggins. Now, sometimes Wiggins better off when he doesn't have to put the ball on the deck. Kicks to Fournier. They double him with Butler. And the foul on Andrew Wiggins. That's his fourth foul of the contest. Fourth foul of the night. Now he needs to be smart. Can't reach in and pick up something foolish. Back to Fournier. Just five on the clock. Here's Gordon. It's rebounded by Towns. Towns has got 11 rebounds in the game. Here's Wiggins, and there are the Timberwolves with another bucket. Boy, every time he goes up now, it just looks like the shot's going in. He's perfect from the field in this quarter. They set the pick. Pass to Isaac, to the middle. Gibson with the steal. Here's Wiggins, and it's blocked by Gordon. Fournier gets a wide open look. Off target with his three. Minnesota leading by nine. Here's Teague. And he drops in the layup off the glass. Well, Kevin, how about that ability to mix speeds? Teague is so hard to keep up with when he's penetrating. Time call time here. Time the out. Magic decide to talk it over. Carl Anthony Towns with a strong contribution so far in this one. Man, he has absolutely worn them out in the paint. They, they need to come up with a plan to limit his touches in the interior. Now we get the chance to present our Jordan player of the game, Carl Anthony Towns. 
And guys, he's been about as close to perfection as you can be. The intensity he's played with has been amazing. Just no let up. And as fired up as he's been, he's never let his emotions get out of control. He sure has given this crowd a treat tonight. This kind of performance only cements his status as a fan favorite. And it's the magic with the ball. Peyton kicks to Gordon. Vucevic to the pass to Peyton. Towns with the steal. And Gibson, here we go. And it's Gibson finishing it off. What a quick read by Towns, always keeping his head up. The magic trail by 13. There's a good screen. Back to Peyton. Some nice ball movement by the Magic. There's the pass to Vucevic. Shot to stop the run. He lays it in. Vucevic has got four points in the quarter. Boy, the defense was in perfect position, but it simply didn't matter. He's just too skilled, too good. Here's Isaac, covered by Wiggins. Gordon up on top. Vucevic gets double team. Isaac misses. Timberwolves leading by 11. Here's Towns. That shot off the mark. Gordon with the defensive effort. Here's Isaac from 15 feet away. And Vucevic again. Vucevic has got 35. I yeah, love watching Isaac find the open teammate. Has great floor awareness out there and just knows when one of his guys has a clean look. And he got the whistle, so he'll have a three-point play opportunity. That'll put Aaron Gordon on the line. That one is on town. Whole new look on the floor for Minnesota. So Orlando going with an almost entirely new group here. Yambo, he's checked in for Vucevic. Mario Hazonia comes in for Isaac. Jonathan Simmons is checked in for Fournier. And DJ Augustine subbed in for Peyton. It's Bialica, and there's the slam dunk to finish it off. And guys got careless with the ball there, and the turnover leads to the big stuff. Once he came up right with the steal, he went straight on the attack. Fantastic anticipation. Then he shows major explosiveness converting at the other end. And so they choose to intentionally foul. 23 seconds left to play here in the fourth. And so they foul intentionally. He hits the first one, and that makes it a seven-point lead. I think Wiggins will always be remembered in that monster trade for Kevin Love a while ago. You don't see many trades like that in the NBA. Now a timeout called by Orlando. They're trailing by eight. We've got 22 seconds left in the fourth quarter. We've got 22 seconds left to play in the final quarter. A three from Simmons. Good! Oh, and that cuts the lead to just five. And all of a sudden, that three puts them in striking distance, guys. He's had that shot working all night. Yeah, and if he can stay hot from out there, his three-point shot could be the tool they use to win this game. Gets the first, and that increases their lead to six. You know, I think the one area where Muhammad seems to get more comfortable each year is the free throw line. So he goes two for two at the lot, and it's a seven-point game. Yeah, that's how they can ensure this lead stays where it is. Keep knocking down those free throws. And Muhammad throws it down. And, and that's a killer instinct on display as they try to put this one on ice. I think that's exactly the mentality you have to have. You don't want to give this team any hope of coming back. And so Minnesota takes the win. Even early on in this one, it seemed like they were happy to be playing at home tonight. And it makes a big difference. And once they started to really play in rhythm, you never felt like they had any doubts as to whether or not they were going to win. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. 
Hey, Kevin, thank you. Andrew, an impressive win for you guys. How will you look back on tonight? Uh, it feels great, you know, you know, I think the whole team played great. You know, we shared the ball, uh, we grabbed rebounds, we made big possessions, you know, so I think it was a great game. Hey, Andrew, congrats again. Thanks for your time. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David, great job. Thanks so much. And that'll wrap it up, folks. For Greg Anthony, Doris Burke, and David Olmos, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.